Right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the most consistently inconsistent entertainment commentary podcast. Oh my god, first take. Let's go! <laughs> uh, I am your host, Just Jay Sama. Welcome to the Candy Culture Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, producer Plank. Yo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a very jam-packed show today. We're talking about the FTC and Phil Spencer's mob ties. That, that boy is different, man. Uh, we also got some information and some news on uh, some movie stuff, some other video game stuff. And of course, we got to talk about Twitch versus Kick. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the show today, ladies and gentlemen. Because we got a lot of FTC versus Xbox stuff. Which, by the way, have you read any of that stuff? Um, no, but I keep seeing, like, crazy fucking head, <laughs> Crazy fucking yeah, headlines. I see interesting quotations every time <laughs> I, I read about it or I see something about it. Yeah, I might have to pull a couple of these articles because there, there's no way Phil Spencer said some of this shit. There's just no way. It's got to be Cap but it's there's a verge article right here hold on let me see ftc versus microsoft all the news from the big xbox courtroom battle microsoft is heading in let's see heading to court on june 22nd to face the federal trade commission otherwise known as the ftc in a five-day case that will determine the future of its 68.7 billion dollar proposal acquisition of activision blizzard which is so crazy that activision blizzard is worth that much there's no fucking way well, I think it's all the Call of Duty and stuff, to be hey, honest. Man. And at, and Blizzard has a lot of shit, so Yo. They're not they're not they're not worth a squirrel fart to me, honestly. Like there's all this shit is crazy. That's fair, but that's because they're making fucking dog shit games aside from True, Apple. true. They need yo, if they really wanted to do something, they need to acquire Riot. Uh ah, um, that'll really Riot get the girlies won't... in a bunch. Yeah, that'd be insane, but I don't think that'd happen. Yeah, I don't Riot think so, is either. so big, it it'd be even more than sixty-eight million <laughs> or billion, excuse <laughs> so, me. Let's see. The FTC wants a preliminary injunction granted to prevent Microsoft from closing its deal ahead of a separate legal challenge that's due to commence on August second. So that's upcoming uh, next week, I believe. Uh, the stakes mm. are high. Microsoft has until July eighteenth to try and close its proposed acquisition deal. Uh, otherwise, it will have to pay $3 billion in breakup fees to Jesus. Activision Blizzard or renegotiate new terms. The FTC isn't the only regulatory trying to block this deal from happening. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, decided to block the deal in April, and Microsoft is currently appealing that decision in a case that will commence in late July. I think there's also one uh one for Japan and they're they're starting to bring up charges against Sony for Square Enix actually. Um I saw that really? in another article today. Yeah. Uh Microsoft is bringing CEO Sa Satya Nadelli uh, Nadella? Bro, I cannot read. <laughs> to San Francisco to the San Francisco apologies to her. Yeah, apologies <laughs> to her. I mean, she's never going to listen to this podcast who cares. Um this week to defend against the FTC's preliminary injunction requests. Xbox chief Phil Spencer and a number of other executives will also take the stand, along with PlayStation chief Jim Ryan and Activision CEO Bobby Kodak. Yes, sir. Kodak, yes, sir. Hitting the stand. Um, I hope they send that man to prison. None of this, sure. none of the FTC stuff has to do with Bobby going to prison, but he need to go to prison, for sure. Yeah, Damn, dirty, okay, dirty I... Dick Bobby need to be in jail, man, for sure. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. What are you talking about? We covered this a couple of months ago, man. He was touching people in the office. You remember? Oh yeah. Yeah, that. yeah, I yeah. I forgot about. You that. remember the cubicle crawls? You know? Oh, oh let the yeah, girls. Was... Yeah, yeah, let the girls run around and slap them on the. Yeah, they're the new interns, whatever. Yeah, that was Bobby's idea. It. Oh nah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Bobby, no, no. Bobby need to be in the jail in the jail cell, man. Bobby was tripping. Bobby was tripping. <laughs> Bobby was doing more than tripping. That brother had his socks and shoes off, man. He was slipping and sliding in the office. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so there is um, a video deposition, actually. Uh, I don't know if we have the video footage here. I might have to look it up. Um, from Jim Ryan, Jeff Fisher, Phil Eisler, Eisler uh, from NVIDIA uh dr robert lee from the ftc 
uh, Dr. Elizabeth Bailey, who is the Microsoft econ economic expert, and Lori Wright of Xbox. Um, so there's a ton of testimony going on in the next week. So they're actually in the middle of that now. So we probably won't get any more relevant information until way after this podcast is out. So yeah, yeah, he's been saying some wild stuff, man. Um, let me get some of this other stuff. Cause this is a really, really long article. Um, considering acquiring Bungie and Sega to bolster Xbox game pass. Wow, this is as of today. They're looking to acquire Bungie. Uh, let's see. Considering acquiring Bungie and Sega. This is today. Wait, Bungie? Doesn't Sony already have Bungie? Um, Didn't they just pick them up? They did, They did, but um, they got out of that deal, if I recall correctly. Oh, shit. Okay. They got out of the Sony deal, or like the PlayStation deal, I believe. Mm -hmm. wow. That was a while back. Okay. They got out of that deal and so i don't know what they're doing with sega Yo. Sega would be interesting okay so to to continue about this ftc situation um this headline is so crazy it's written by tom warren at uh, at the verge so shout out to tom he's actually uh i don't know the guy but shout out to him, shout um, out to him. yeah big shout out to him because he's doing the work for us uh microsoft exec was ready to go spend sony out of business to strengthen xbox microsoft xbox game studio chief Matt Booty, yep, shout out to Matt Booty. <laughs> he was encouraged, he tried to encourage Xbox CFO Tim Stewart to spend big money on acquiring game content in 2019 and 2020 to set the company up to battle Sony in subscriptions. The revelation came in an email thread that's part of the FTC uh, Microsoft hearing. So we at Microsoft are very are in a very unique position to be able to go and spend so much money to get Sony out of business, said Booty in December of 2019 in an email referencing spending two billion two to three billion dollars in 2020 to avoid competitors getting ahead, uh, <laughs> getting ahead of them and getting content late. Mm. Hold on, let me pull up the rest of the article because this is actually very interesting. So these are internal emails. Uh, it is practically impossible for anyone to start new video streaming service at scale at this point. Referencing competitors like Google, Amazon, and Sony, Booty described content as a moat and that only Sony could really compete with Xbox Game Pass. Yo, mm. these boys are saying some stuff that the fanboys on Twitter are not saying. That's, that's just so crazy. Like. You know the console wars really are putting people on one are you know splitting the aisle basically right the microsoft boys are talking about oh we finally have video games you know we're buying up all these studios and shit but the games are shit and then all the sony ponies really just have no idea what the fuck is going on <laughs> mm. but they they're just like oh we're we're so innocent even though billions and billions of dollars have been lobbied specifically so that way xbox cannot get certain video games so for the last 13 years uh sony has actually been paying directly to square enix to make sure specific final fantasy titles do not come to xbox and when they do come to xbox they come at a um a degradation uh so the games are severely degraded so um Eesh. yeah so that came out um let's see the email shows that microsoft strategy uh, they're thinking around game content, specifically for Game Pass in the year of 2019. Microsoft has since acquired Bethesda for $7.5 billion and is trying to get its $68.7 billion proposal of Activision Blizzard deal done over the line before 2022, which obviously they did not do. Yeah. Both are a lot bigger than the two to $3 billion figure that Booty had floated around in 2019. Microsoft also seriously considered acquiring Sega and Bungie, with Xbox chief Phil Spencer even going as far as requesting strategy approval from Microsoft CEO at the time to approve uh, Sega Sammy regarding a potential acquisition of Sega gaming studios and all of its assets. Both the Sega Ooh. and Bungie targets were part of a much larger, larger watch list that Microsoft said had 12 other components to it so 12 other gaming studios um including other additional mobile developers to bolster both on xbox game pass as well as on the xbox console platform bro these guys were looking to throw it's some money 
Oh yeah. Yeah. There's that, there's that's a how they increase of... their market share, right? Yeah. Like just throwing your money at studios and getting more games to Xbox and shit. Essentially, because but... Sony was on their mob ties shit, talking about <laughs> yeah, we don't want you on that Xbox <laughs> shit. You stand over here. Yeah, they were acquiring studios like they were the Infinity Stones. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then one more update to this, uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll give our little two piece about this. The second day of the FTC, actually, are we on the second day or the third day? What are we on? I think it's the second day. Yeah. Apparently they even wanted to acquire Google Stadia and specifically really? use that technology. Yeah. It says right here to use that technology to increase Xbox game pass streaming performance over time. Wow, mm. bro, they That's, were they were really trying to throw money at the problem. They can't figure it out, so they just said throw all of the money. And well, I mean, yeah, that's how you do it, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And uh, the the last bit of news about that, uh, I I think that's important, which also comes from an article from The Verge that is also written by Tom Warren. Man, shout out to Tom. Tom is over here cooking up this entire, all of these depositions, this entire uh, FTC versus Microsoft. Shout out to him, man. So that way we don't thank have you, to Tom. do all the yeah. Thank you, Tom. So that way we don't have to do all the legwork to figure out what the fuck is really going on. <laughs> we really don't. Like all we do is report on this shit. All right. Uh, Microsoft says Xbox has officially quote unquote lost the console wars, which this one is probably gonna get the little kids in a bunch. The FTC versus Microsoft case is starting this morning, and Microsoft is keen to show Xbox is in third place. Xbox has lost the console wars and its rivals are positioned to continue to dominate throughout the remainder of the decade, argues Microsoft uh, in a filing today. It also reveals that Xbox had 16% share of console sales in 2021 and 21% of console sales, uh, console install base. Wow, this is very interesting. Now, there's a bunch of legal documents and jargon here that I'm not about to go into, but I think um, we should go down to the comments for a second here. Uh, mm, there's one gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> there's one gentleman here four days ago. He wrote, I love my Xbox. I love my Xbox series like X. I swear. <laughs> I love my Xbox coming from a switch. It's a mind blowing piece of technology. <laughs> the games are fire. Most of what I want is there and the rest are all on switch exclusives anyway. Maybe it is just a par for the course now, but having the ability to just say, I've got 15 minutes and I can just press play. <laughs> and I don't have to do much in terms of work is really nice. The PlayStation I've, I've never even used, but is a very strong in that department. Uh, can't wait for Starfield and currently enjoying Star Wars thing and also Skyrim. <laughs> I just... People are still playing Skyrim? People are still playing Jesus. Skyrim in 2023, man. Jesus. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. This comment was hilarious, but this man needs to be psychologically evaluated for sure. He needs to be put in a jacket where the arms flip backwards <laughs> because this guy is fucking Damn. weird. <laughs> and why do you think that? <laughs> he's number one. He's still he's still playing Skyrim, but for him to oh, okay. say it's such a huge graphical leap from the Nintendo Switch to the Xbox Series X. My brother, my brother in Christ, I have something to inform you. That console is seven years old. <laughs> that shit looks terrible. Uh, have you seen well, what, the? the stuff? Yeah, have you seen the uh, the videos on? Um, not PlayStation, but it's the um, Tears of the Kingdom crashing switches. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Seen it's that. a whole fucking TikTok trend, bro. It's so fucking hilarious, like. Well, that is a big fucking project for like that un like terrible ass like cpu on that thing yeah bro they, that old ass hardware they got that shit running at fucking 12 frames a second like you could probably draw the frames faster than they're loading on the screen like <laughs> yeah i bet <laughs> oh man uh okay so with all that being said i'm gonna I'm go ahead and follow tom warren on uh on Twitter, so oh, shout okay. out to him. Yeah, uh, shout out to Tom. Yeah, he's once again. senior editor. It just just to be you know fully transparent, he is the senior editor at The Verge. So shout out to him. Um, shout out. Uh, he also reported that you know the in the FTC documents there are over 112 titles that Microsoft has paid to have either not come to the PlayStation platform or have a significant quality reduction on the PlayStation platform. Wait, you said that 
Wasn't Sony doing that shit too? Yes. Damn. Yeah. This is really some mob ties shit. <laughs> I'm really telling you, it. bro. Like, this this doesn't sound real. This this literally sounds like like you know like when you were a kid and you saw that there was a McDonald's across the street from the Burger King and you always thought they were going outside throwing sandwiches at each other and talking shit. Yeah, this is what's yeah. really happening between Sony and Microsoft. This is so crazy. I want to know what the pers perspective from any Nintendo executives, because I've, I'm sure, I'm sure the Nintendo mobsters, for sure, the Nintendo mm. mafia definitely has some bodies buried somewhere. Like The Nintendo goons. Yeah, the Nintendo goons definitely have paid some money to make sure that Sonic can't get on the PlayStation or on the Xbox after 06. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's... <laughs> there's definitely there's definitely no way bro there's definitely no way so what what are your thoughts on this what do you think it um the mob ties are real man i find it fun i always find it funny that like these companies are just they're just like you know what fuck it we're doing we're gonna do whatever it takes to get our market share up and i guess they are correct when they said sony won but damn microsoft spending and like still losing it feels kind of insane, but then again, both of them have spent a lot fucking each other over. Yeah, this is this is so crazy. Especially, I think this is the wild part for me, and this is I'm gonna try to keep this very short because you know I'm a hot jump in and get ranty. I find it so interesting that both of these companies have thrown billions of dollars to block the other one from creating video games, but neither of y'all have made hardly any good shit you know what i mean like aside from there's ghost of tsushima god of war we'll include ratchet and clank sure why not um what else have we have exclusively to the playstation platform that came recently god of war um you say you say god of war yes yes sir oh, okay it, it, i really can't think of like specific playstation exclusives that weren't i mean spider-man what else we got? Spider-Man, yeah. Horizon, I guess. Horizon, yeah. yeah first part, these are significantly hard-hitting first-party titles that are from reparable... Uh, shit, I guess we can include, you know, The Last of Us 2, I guess. I, I sure. wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. I would say yeah. bigger um, first-party titles. Yeah, bigger first-party uh, titles that we already knew were going to be bangers, right? But then we also have a couple of Xbox bangers, right? So you would think sure. with all of this money that's like being shelled out, games would be made. Like, you know, it's like it's like when rappers used to beef back in the 90s, right? And early 2000s, <laughs> and they would throw bars at each other. Bars and bullets, of course. But, you know, they would actually sure. like have multiple diss songs. Remember the era of diss songs? Like when if you had a problem with a motherfucker, you, you especially online, you, you was on a record. Yeah, you you were dropping a record. For sure. A diss track was coming out. Sony and Microsoft not having no diss tracks is, is kind of absurd, and, uh, absurd and spending billions of dollars, no diss track. That's absolutely crazy. So You think they need like, Phil Spencer needs to hop on a beat? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if he gets that Kaz Harai, <laughs> if he gets that, if he gets that Kaz Harai AI fucking <laughs> feature, oh, it's over. It's over. It's mm. absolutely over. But yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I think this would be... This would be more entertaining to me if we actually got some great video games out of it. For now, we only have sure. like a few here and there, and it's just, it's not enough. So I think people, uh, as weirdly as it sounds, Starfield, while it's probably the bigger, the biggest game that Xbox is going to have for a while mm -hmm. in terms of like exclusive, right? It's exclusive, right? Yes. I'm not sure. I believe so. Yes, it is. Okay, that's going to be the biggest game it has, but Phil Spencer said that shit was not going to be a console seller. And I think I somewhat agree with that, but at the same time, I think there's way too much hype around this game for it not to do at least something. They want it to bad, be Star Citizen. Well, Star Citizen already exists. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to be Star Citizen, I guess, more AI or more like interactive worlds. Mm. Like a conventional story. I can see that. I can see that. It does look like a very interesting game, but it's going to be on PC. So, I'm cool. That is <laughs> true. Yeah, we're going to get that PC 
uh yeah religion. we definitely need new computers yeah for, God, <laughs> for sure bro we're good oh man yo i can see my shit smoking already just thinking about it oh my oh, god oh yeah packing my shit Hold up, on, i got another question for you man yeah, sure if playstation okay the playstation ceo and phil spencer right mm -hmm. did the fusion dance no 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 they did the disc record thing mm -hmm. what beat do you think they would hop on oh to shit do a disc record. <laughs> um man that's a that's a tough one i'm i'm for sure thinking phil spencer gives me a no vaseline type of type of vibe mm. for sure. phil spencer is definitely spitting no vaseline so um mm. you think it's gonna be like take a, like the sony ceo is gonna get on the takeover beat yeah absolutely and then uh. then not only that they about to they about to hit him with the uh what is that Drake's back to back. Oh, back just, to back. Back to back, just for the funnies, because we had to hit you twice. <laughs> we uh, need to hit you financially and the fact that you ain't got no games. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. These dudes just gonna have to do like '90s rappers and shoot each other, because this this shit is getting hello. This billionaire shit is getting out of control. Put put both of them dudes in a submarine and then they gotta fight to the death to get out. How about that? Okay. Maybe <laughs> not. Maybe that's a little too soon. Too soon. What the fuck? Hey man, listen, these guys are billionaires. They don't give a shit what we talking about. Oh, so, true, true. But uh hey man, you know what? I just want to see some good games come out of it. I think that's gonna be the uh the most interesting part. So speaking of Starfield, um actually, hold on, let me uh start the other stopwatch, that's my bad. Uh speaking of Starfield, so we saw that there are no physical copies coming to yeah. any platform at all. Um, yep. how do you feel about that? No physical copies for this game. I'm actually okay with that instead of like having a two or three disc game, because we all know that Starfield is only going to work on like the SSD, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. They said that. So I'm not, I'm, oh, I'm okay with that. I'm rather. They said okay this bitch is frying M2s. That. Oh, is it? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I know. But I, I think it's appropriate with the amount of tech that they're putting in the game. If they, if that's what's really in the game, right? Mm -hmm. The floating sandwiches bullshit. If that's really in the game, well, it, it will be in the game. But if it's as advanced as everyone's saying it is, then I don't. I have no mind. As well as uh, I don't mind that shit. As well as the fact that it's in 30 FPS, that shit doesn't bother me either. I'd rather have a better con uh, better experience on 30 FPS than playing like a shitty 60. I would say. I wonder what the Xbox 360 exclusive players are saying right now. Motherfucker still playing on an Xbox 360? <laughs> There's no way. I just randomly thought of that. I don't know why. I was like, hmm, I wonder what they're doing right now. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of people for sure playing Dance Central and uh, Sonic 06. On Xbox 360? Yes, sir. Hey, bro, get you a PC. <laughs> we gonna get you a fund or something. Because there's no way you still on that bum-ass Xbox 360. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. tell you right now. No, we are not. You gonna go figure it out. So, oh, hell yeah, no. Nah. You're not part of the game. We gonna like set that. up a charity. Yeah. Get this motherfucker like a PC or something. Yeah, something like that. So, um, hey, man, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I, I'm a little on the fence about this. Because I love, I love having physical games and just for the simple fact of no internet no connectivity whatsoever you pop the disc in no updates you play the game raw i remember day one cyberpunk 2077 when the game was just an absurd mess that game was fun that game was so much fun I enjoyed mm. a lot of aspects of that game. And then as the game continued to get updates, I wish we could play patch versions. That's what I wish. I wish we could find a way. I'm sure there's a way to like put it on a flash drive and crack it or something. But there are certain builds to certain games when they drop. It's like, okay, this was like the prime build. Like I'm I'm looking forward to the 2.0 update or whatever and the 7.1 update. Like those are going to be so much fun, obviously. But mm. another thing I think we have to keep in perspective is this is a Bethesda game. This shit going to be broken. 
This shit gonna be broken day one. Why? <laughs> And I don't think even they... after the report yeah. that said uh, this is going to be the least buggy game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure it is. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Love that report. <laughs> and I'm Idris Elba. I think about that sure. Shit a lot. Okay, <laughs> that's fucking funny. Um, but no, man. I mean, if you're a physical collector, this this kind of really this is actually kind of bums me out a little bit because. I would love to be able to continue my collection, my giant collection of physical games where I can physically, you know, pick it up and hold it in my hands. There's just something that hits different about that compared to mm -hmm. having to wait and sit for the game to download. Obviously, you have to do that anyway with most games nowadays. The disc is really just a data disc. It's really just an unlock because um, all yeah. you really do is go into the store or whatever system it is that you're on and download the game anyway. And then, even though you're downloading the data for the game and it's on your console, you can't play it unless you have the key unlocker that is the disc. So it's kind of fucking stupid. But, you know, we're going in a direction where we're probably never going to use anything physical ever again, and it makes game preservation very difficult. Because there's a ton of games that I have on my PS3 that I love playing. And I have no problem just going, dusting off the disc and popping it in there. That's how I can play infamous at 1080p instead of having to stream it to my fucking ps4 or ps5 at fucking 720p resolution like get the fuck out of here with that shit like no thanks so there's just there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna miss here and i think if this game obviously it's gonna be successful i just i don't want this to set a trend for the rest of the industry like that's that's gonna be really depressing mm. so i think physical games it, it was just kind of the natural progression of these things was all right well we're even with the ps5 right the ps5 has that digital only version mm -hmm. because you know what i mean physical is just everyone's buying shit on the store or you know what i mean through codes or anything yeah because you can get it right now yeah you can get it that second like you don't have to go to gamestop anymore and talk to them about some bullshit and then get your copy and then go home <laughs> you wish they got to offer you that power uh, rewards first. Fuck GameStop. <laughs> fuck GameStop. Those fucking bastards. My bad. I went on a tangent. But like, yeah, it, it, it I, just I, felt I was just letting you get it out, man. You all right? You need, yeah, you yeah. need another moment? Nah, nah. I got it. I got it off. You know, you heard me. You know what I was doing. <laughs> but that was just the natural progression of things. And it sucks but i feel like there'll always be a place for collectors and shit like that with gaming and shit mm. uh this is just like one of those instances where they probably didn't want to put like 30 30 discs worth of content onto the shit so you had to download it anyway because red dead 2 and other games like that have the two disc and then you got to put the first one in and you got the second one that you got to put in and i think red dead 1 had the one where half the content was on the first disc and then the other half was on another, oh, no. if I remember correctly. Like, hey, and that shit was annoying. Yeah, but that's fun. Like, it, it adds the novelty other to fun? it. Yeah. No, 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 no. It adds novelty oh. to it. That's what I mean. It adds novelty to it. Because obviously, you know, I got Cyberpunk on, you know, two disc. So it just, I don't know. It's different. Like, it just I don't know when you open the box and see that there's there's two discs you feel like there's something extra special in there probably because it kind of triggers the uh you know dvd blu-ray digital copy box set idea so yeah yeah I don't know maybe I don't know every time I've ever had a, when I was a kid when I had the the physical copy of games I'd always go through like three or four on certain games because I'd just be fucking them shits up so as a kid doing that shit, I just have, that shit just bad for me. That shit was just bad for me in general. Mm. Oh. But yeah, now I keep my shit together. So. Yeah, so we'll we'll see as Starfield comes out with no physical copies and well, hopefully the game works, I guess. They can hot patch it all they want to, but if the game is dog shit, the game is gonna run like dog shit. I just think it's probably gonna be very, ooh, excuse me. I think it's gonna be very unoptimized for a lot of people. So, gonna probably set a couple of PCs on fire. Oh yeah. So you know the requirements are already pretty up there for like a. Oh, so we won't be PC. playing it in this lifetime. The minimum requirements, I believe, were pretty, pretty decent hardware. Mm. 
So I won't be playing that shit. You might be able to play it, but nah. not very well. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Let me check I'm, real quick. I'm good. When Phantom Liberty comes out, I'm already kind of. Uh, you're already kind of fucked. Yeah. I'm already kind of pushing it. Yeah, because obviously my PS4 and my PS5 can run. Well, <laughs> my PS5 can run it. Um, <laughs> I said PS4 because I have the like the installation disc. So in order to play the PS5 version, I have to put the PS4 disc in there. It's the most annoying <laughs> shit, but I I like it for some reason. Probably because I'm an old man. Um, what was that? Ooh, oh yeah, yeah. My my computer's not gonna be able to run that. At all. Yeah, it, it can't. Even it, mine can barely run it. Yeah, the it's minimum gonna requirements are, are insane. Yeah, my shit struggles with fucking Overwatch sometimes. Like, but that's because Overwatch is a shit game, though. So, true. Yeah, it's an unoptimized ass piece of shit. So, speaking of um, unoptimized, let's go ahead and get into this other conversation that no one really wants to hear or care about. Kick versus Twitch. Um, so oh, shit. yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump into this because I have no idea how long we are into this recording anymore because the timestamp says one thing and the fucking OBS recording says another. So we just gonna keep on rolling. Um, I just let it rock. <laughs> um, so Twitch versus Kick. Um, the first thing I want to start off by saying is uh, I signed up for for Kick. Um, I took a, okay. I took a gander, you know, they signed me for <laughs> a whole $12. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give there it you up. Go. Hey, you know, there you go. Claps um, all around. Uh, retired YouTuber has now been signed to dead platform. Um, but in all honesty, it's the, one of the ugliest websites I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, that's just a U UI, uh, yep. but the actual website it's, it holds together pretty well. Uh, there was a that day me uber and pm were kind of scrolling through and looking for the titty streams and we couldn't find one man we were we were really yeah we were diligently looking specifically for a woman with no with no shirt on and we couldn't find one um we came across amaranth <laughs> but you know she had clothes on so it was just like <laughs> okay useless um but we kept going we kept digging and we also were digging down into the lowest parts of kick to see like what's the lowest view count people were getting um and it's the and surprise surprise it's exactly the same way it is on twitch um the different categories and sections and uh games that you're playing yeah you will be put down at the bottom if you don't have viewers so it's the exact same thing uh don't go thinking this what is it 90 10 70 30 what the fuck are they splitting with creators I don't 95 5 95 5 yeah bro it's 95 percent of zero is still zero i i want to let some of you know just because you're <laughs> just because you're oh i'm switching from twitch to kick look buddy you didn't have anybody watching you on twitch you won't have anybody watching you on on kick i promise you that's just i'm sorry that's yeah. just the way it works uh your deals are not going through buddy um which actually leads me to a, a completely different tangent, uh, if I may. Um, of course. Yeah, I've been watching a couple of content creators, and I've, I really have just figured out that a lot of people don't give a shit about ideas. And I'll tell you why. Because when something new drops, and you know how we always get like the reaction videos or whatever, and then that's it, and then people will play the game or watch the movie or whatever and do the review or whatever, blah, 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 blah. There's no one really like innovating that space. You know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of like new innovative content anymore. Um, and even I saw Mr. Beast tweeting about this, like ever since he's been dropping like all of these gems on multiple podcasts and stuff like that, people now do exactly the same stuff that he was doing. Like there was a guy who was like, oh, I'm going to tattoo Mr. Beast's name on me uh, every single day until he responds to my tweet or some shit like that. And oh, yeah, I saw that. And he was like, Insane. why? He's like, why would you do this? Like, this is, this is dumb. Like, this isn't even good for content. Like, nobody wants to watch this. And to which he was right. 100%. Don't, nobody cares. I don't even know dude's name. But I know, I know what happened to him. Yeah, you saw the headline and then everyone was like, oh. Uh oh. Loser. Uh -oh. And then keep scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, not really. I don't know. So, that's kind of been uh, my own personal hang up with you know creating new content and it's just finding a space for that so um yeah, but anyway difficult. uh but yeah it it's is hard difficult. to find engaging content as well as like interesting right actually to keep I, a good balance of both i would say no i'm gonna disagree here um really yes and uh of course i gotta i gotta quote uncle gary v um 
this one lady asked him, how do I stand out from everybody doing the exact same thing? And he told her, he said, you're you. That's what makes you unique. That's what makes you different than everyone else. So why not that be the thing that you're doing? And she's like, oh, well, I don't want to look a certain way. He's like, oh, so it's really not you being caught up on your content. It's you being caught up on your thoughts and opinions of other people's thoughts and opinions. And he was like, fuck them. Like, who gives a fuck what they have to say? Which I, obviously I agree with. So, but that's, yeah. yeah. And the reason why I say I don't agree with that is because your specific unique input will be the thing that makes your content different than everyone else. Yeah, it may be able to follow, you know, trends and stuff like that, but making the same formulaic bullshit everybody else is making, like, I I really don't fuck with these like reaction videos anymore or anything like that. Like it's just it's just kind of dumb. But if you take it <coughs> oh, excuse me. If you take it and do it a, a specific way or make it different somehow, then it it makes your content engaging and compelling to watch. So, true, but how do you find the the next like thing, right? Just because you being you and that's entirely unique doesn't mean it's like interesting right it's just unique true but it starts somewhere it's fair start, it starts somewhere and sometimes it takes a little bit more uh grinding and leveling up to really find like okay this is my unique sound this is my unique creation method this is my unique way of having these videos look right sure they're comes a, a, a point where you've done it so many times, you can now change and innovate it in different ways and people may respond differently. That just requires time. Like you're not gonna be able to get that in a week. Fair, but by the time people find that or they're close to finding that, mm -hmm. I think most people give up. Yeah, yeah. So but. it's kind of ridiculous to be like, all right, well, find your unique voice or do X, Y, and Z, don't follow trends. And then by the time that you know what I mean? You find that life had already happened and now you, you know what I mean? You already moved on. Right. Yeah. Just So it's difficult because if it was easy, everyone would do that shit. Nah, I, that's also where I think, uh, it, it is easy for you if you continue to be that unique individual. It's like talking about something that you actually care about, right? You can kind of do it in, infinitely, but as soon as you start like trying to pull shit out of your ass that you're just kind of making up and you know you're not really you're not really about you're not really researched up on it kind of like these red pill podcasters uh you know you think so yeah shout out pearly by the way um yeah when you when you run out of talking points that you've heard from other people um regurgitated over and over and over again and then you try to spin and flip it different ways so it sounds different bitch you sound exactly the same as everybody else like it just it, it's the exact same shit sorry it's it's not any different now if you have some different talking points that are you know more uniquely your your viewpoint you can talk about it for significantly longer you won't get as many views of course because you're not saying women don't deserve to vote and shit like that which i don't know why she said that that's that bitch crazy uh, <laughs> she really went on that man's show and said yeah i don't think women should be able to vote he asked her why and she couldn't explain like what I just, I. Hey, bro, it'll never, it'll never cease to amaze me how insane, like, people can be. Yeah. What did what did, what did your homie say? They'll do anything for clout. They'll do anything for clout. <laughs> bro, shit is a drug, man. Um, but it's also agents has said that agent and low have said this when you, when you lack, uh, self confidence and when you lack. Uh, confidence in your ability to do things or provide services or have any skills you kind of resort to stuff like this so you really don't have a choice you kind of have to do all of these weird gimmicks and shit like that because you want people's attention but you know you're not you're not valuable enough to to warrant it so you know that has nothing to do with what we were already talking about but that was just you know odd yeah, sorry, no. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah sorry about that guys uh <laughs> So speaking of having no talent, um, if you're a no talented uh, streamer on Twitch, uh, Kick is not going to save you. Neither is YouTube Live. Uh, just making good content will. Uh, I'll say that. 
So um, there's a comparison going around um, from Twitch to YouTube super chats and hype chat revenue and the donations on kick and stuff like that. I haven't been taking, paying attention to any of it, mostly because I don't watch streamers. I don't stream myself. Um, I don't pay attention to streamers. Nobody I know streams like that. Um, yeah, so it's kind of kind of over my head. Did you catch any of this? Any of like the new Twitch changes or anything like that? Yeah, I've seen a little bit. I'm not this hype chat shit. I, I was in a stream. I was in Maximilian stream. Mm -hmm. um, and I was watching him watch a Street Fighter tournament and they were just fucking memeing about hype chats, essentially. Mm. And it's <laughs> it's like super chats from YouTube, obviously, but like way more shitty. Mm. Okay. You get less. Uh, they take they take a a thirty percent cut as long with five percent on web purchases. Wow. I believe, for processing fees and shit like that. Uh, YouTube covers that obviously, but you it's still like a seventy thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I'm looking at it, the comments. It's here. a useless ass feature. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments here. And then one person asks, how is this any different than bits? Bits have a 30% markup similar to Facebook. So between bits and hyper chat, us streamers will earn almost identical amounts, if not more from hype chat. And then uh, the lady who originally posted this thing, she said, uh, it's entirely, entirely different from bits. Bits have a markup, meaning it costs more so the fees are on the viewer. Hype chat does not have a markup. The cut is taken directly from the streamer. A streamer earns $1 from 100 bits, but only 65 cents from $1 hype chat. Yeah. That is a, uh, that is pretty significant, if you ask me. Um, it is, it's, it's literally the biggest waste of time they've ever added to the site, to be honest. Mm. I, uh, I really don't see anything good coming of this, if I'm going to be honest. I really don't see Twitch succeeding any further with this. I really don't see them improving their already shitty website. So, uh, I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, Pretty much there... I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was going to say the only way that Twitch is really... I, I don't want to say surviving, but the way they're pushing their site to go towards is... The, you've heard this from representatives. I think the Twitch CEO even said it. Hey, run those fucking ads, bitch. That's what we said to you. <laughs> and you better fucking enjoy it. Run them up. Run yeah. those eight, nine ads, bitch. That's how we make money off your dumb ass. Oh, uh, they didn't say it that, like that, but you know. They might as well have. <laughs> they might as well, might as well have, put the yeah. barrel in your mouth. <laughs> uh, literally. <laughs> put them mob tie shit. They put the barrel in your mouth. Hey, run those ads, bitch. You want this money? Put God. the pistol in your mouth. Sorry. Hey, you know what, man? That's speaking of putting putting a pistol in your mouth. Let's talk about uh our queen, our lord and savior, Pokemon. Um, man, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that sorry, was an I had insane to, transition. I had to, man. Listen, listen, listen. So she went on Kai's stream the other day, uh, and had a conversation about her comments that she made about you know the hundred million dollar deal going over to to <laughs> kick and stuff like that. She actually cleared it up, man. Um, she was talking oh, about, yeah. yeah, she made it seem like, you know, she had the moral high ground and all this other stuff and really disrespected a lot of people, even though she don't, she obviously doesn't think she did. Um, she clearly did. Uh, she wasn't talking about, you know, smaller streamers or all these other people converting over to kick. She meant her specifically, especially because she condemned and, you know, disrespected uh, Streak. Or no, I'm sorry, stake, uh, which is you oh, know stake, all the yes. all the, the gambling, gambling site. Yeah, the gambling site. So she was like, it looks extremely hypocritical of me to take all of this stake money, even though I was previously talking shit. It just looks, you know, it it looks so shady. Morally, it's wrong. How could I live with myself? Blah 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 blah. Which understandable, easily. But then when she was asked what the dollar amount would be for her to you know, flip those morals. Obviously, she didn't talk about that on stream, but you know, she kind of alluded that there is a number to Kai. So uh, that was of live course, on history. There's always a fucking number. Hey, you man. Say otherwise, you're an idiot. But, but this is also the same girl who said I would make $10 million in a single day on OnlyFans if I just created one and I didn't even post anything, which she's 100% absolutely right. I oh, would, yeah. 100%. Even I would pay for that. Like, 
Come on now. She's not even. She's a uh, B minus. You know, she's a B minus leaguer, man. Hey but yo, chill on. Yo, chill on. She's Pokemon cute right though. Now, bro. She's get, so you paying the twenty twenty five? Hell no. But you know I'm a support from the background. <laughs> <laughs> he said I'm gonna hit that Reddit though. Go crazy, man. I'm not going on Reddit. <laughs> I'm gonna hit that Reddit. Hey, don't try to set me up like that. (laughs) I'm gonna hit that Reddit though. As soon as that Pokey content hit the internet, man, I'm on the Reddit for sure. (laughs) Stop tripping, man. You know you got the you know you got the mega link. Stop playing. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But Uh, yeah, I I completely understand what she's saying there. Uh, A lot of people got a little bent out of shape about it. Um, What are your thoughts about that? Um, I think the way things are phrased. You have to be very careful, right? Because when you generalize, I think in the statement, it sound very general. Like, why would I compromise? Like, you know, you everyone's heard the statement. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. The way it was phrased, it seemed like she was kind of dragging on kick streamers um, for that specific, like, taking essentially blood money from gambling and shit like that. Uh, it's a good clarification. But at the same time, you know what I mean? like when you say shit like that or when you you have to be very careful when you say very dramatic shit like that Mm -hmm. in my opinion obviously yeah especially when you know it's about to get clipped up you know what i mean and it's like it's not fair but at the same time hey it's it's what comes with it you know what i mean it what comes with the job of like influencer and shit like that you chose this fair yeah yeah so it's the same thing it's with the, the Nick Merck situation. The exact same thing, actually, because oh. his words. Is I, it? I, yeah, for sure. You th- you think Nick Merck's is is homophobic? Absolutely not. I don't think so. Uh, I don't. Back in the I don't, day, probably. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> hey, back in the day, he might have said some maybe. homophobic stuff. I don't think he. I don't think he was actually homophobic. I don't. I. What if I know? What do I know? I don't. I don't, I don't know. even I know the guy. To re- I think people read into shit too much is what I think about. Yeah, the, yeah, for sure. Shit. People were really, really leaning into his words and stuff like that. And he he basically said like, hey, look, I don't think schools should be teaching my child about these specific topics. Like, I should be teaching my child about that. Which, honestly, I don't see how you could get upset about that. That just says, hey, I want to be included in my in my child's development, my child's life. Uh, I don't yeah, know what parent you wants be to be careful. separated from that. So. One thing you got to be careful of when you say shit like that, uh, like in defense of it, it's his very vague tweet is like almost, I don't want to say it. Uh, it, it's very like ominous in the way it's like, oh, the way it's worded, like leave the children alone when yeah. it comes to like celebrating. Stop teaching the children to be gay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> that's a, a bad little uh little example I stop guess. teaching my my son how to suck cock like yeah <laughs> no nah, that's yeah yeah that's not happening in schools i don't think and also twitter not. is a terrible place to try to give your opinion on some shit mm-hmm. because there's you can't give enough like you can't give enough context you can't give enough nuance to a situation in like what two, 140 characters or like 200 or some shit yeah and then try to you clean can't it up really later. do that even if the tweet is you know what i mean Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be about something like you you believe in. Mm-hmm. Be careful. Yeah, man. I um I believe in Nick Merckx. I don't I don't watch any of his content. I don't support him in any way, shape, or form. Cause you know, I just don't. I you don't Nick, watch that shit. I, yeah, I don't watch a lot of stuff to be honest with you. Like, unless a creator is making good VOD content, I'm really not watching. I'm really not watching the streams. I barely watch my homie stream. Well, you be working, so. True, it true, makes true, true, true. So, you know, you can't relate can't relate to a, you know, real nigga like me, man. It's, it's difficult. Oh, true, so, true. You know, you're, you're, honestly, if you out, out and about in the streets and doing your own thing, other people's words do not, truly do not affect you. Like, they really don't. Like, who cares what some internet fucking troll, this, this guy could have called somebody a maggot and all this other stuff and, you know, said, oh, my, I don't want my kids being gay and all this other stuff. He could have said all this stuff. I would not have cared. I would have been like, damn, that's wild for him to say that. But, you know, prayers to him, I guess. Yeah. Or whatever. Because I'm uh, outside. You know what I mean? He's, uh, like, true. But for the rest of the people who, who uh, you know what I mean, use the internet frequently, this is, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Not a very nice thing to say. 
especially when people perceive it as hateful even if it i i doubt that was the intention mm. yeah no, but his comments all. probably afterward weren't a help too yeah no not even his the little slightest. yeah his little like and then him trying I, to clear it up on stream too that was like yeah I, all right, right broski just i would have just let it slide i would have been like yeah I left up because then for call of D and then for call of duty to suddenly want to be on the right side of history like as if their lobbies oh, aren't yeah. the breeding ground for that shit. Um, <laughs> Literally. For them to be like, oh, we're taking the Nick Merck skin out of the game and blah, 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 blah. Like, man, shut the fuck up. Between y'all and Fortnite taking the Mike Lowry skin out, man, come on. Put that shit back, bro. Stop playing. Stop playing mm. with a nigga money, man. I'm trying to be out here. Shit is crazy. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, man. These companies want to have a high horse. Man, shut up and take this money, bitch. That's all you ever do anyway. Hands there. up. Put your hands out so I can put some money in them. Like, that's all it is, man. But, but I get why they did that to Nick Marks. Like, uh, you you in hot waters as soon as your shit, your fucking skin dropped. Like, what'd you expect? Yeah. Like, we can't just go on, uh, on YouTube and type in Modern Warfare 2 racist clips. Yeah, sure. Hello? Racist trolling. Yeah, we could do that right now, matter of fact. I'd I'd rather not. Yeah, which which one you want? You want the modern modern <laughs> you want the modern modern warfare two or you want the classic? Which you mode mean, you want? I I, <laughs> I, I, I could hook you up out. with both. <laughs> I'm glad you do, but yeah. Oh hey man, it's I'm a, cool. It's a wild world out here, man. That's all I can say. It's a wild world. Those were fucking dark ass times. I'd rather not relive those. True, true. So this uh, shit was literally World War Three. Yeah, honestly. Speaking World of dark times, rust. man, did you see what's going on in the, at the at the box office? This is clearly us getting ready to wrap up the show so we can talk about some of the dumber shit we actually don't really what, give like a fuck about. What, like the Flash about. and shit? Yeah, the that's Flash. specifically what I'm talking about. Bum ass man. movie. I mean, <laughs> what a cinematic masterpiece. Um, You know what? There is a video of a TikTok. I actually, this is the only thing I wanted to show for the show everything else we'll talk about in a separate video so you guys can catch that on our youtube channel youtube.com slash canon culture so you guys can check that out also if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode uh thank you by the way make sure to rate us five stars um so we're gonna play a little bit of audio here this is a guy who was talking about the bad cgi for the flash and he's specifically also talking about a lot of cgi in general within the industry so he kind of gives an explanation um, I put it in the thread. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it yeah, right now. Uh, know the robot on TikTok. So shout out to him for this. Hold on, let me go ahead and pull this up for the audience real quick. So we can play this. If you thought The Flash had bad CGI, I can tell you why, because I worked on the movie. In the past couple of years, it seems like there's been an increase in the amount of complaints about bad CGI in superhero movies. And there's a good reason for this. I mean, well, it's not good, but you'll see what I mean. The way that VFX companies get Sorry, work I'm, is that I'm Marvel playing the video Warner right Brothers now. My bad. I forgot. Yeah, to I'm also to listening to the okay. video right now. Brothers and other studios will approach VFX companies and say, hey, I have 2,000 shots that I need for this sequence. And the VFX studios will place a bid based on that quantity of shots. But here's the catch. The amount of work per shot varies dramatically. So one shot could have a wire removal. Another shot could have wire removal, smoke sim, fire sim, face replacement, green screen. Despite the difference in workload between those two shots, they both are considered just one shot each. Because of this, VFX artists are forced to work relentless hours, overtime almost every day, including weekends. In fact, I had to be the one to call artists on a Friday night to say, hey, can you work over the weekend? Which is part of the reason why I left after three months. But here's the kicker. If these VFX companies aren't meeting the unrealistic expectations that these studios are setting, they risk losing out on future contracts. And there's only so many studios that are making superhero movies anymore. Which means the VFX companies have to bend over backwards to hit these insane deadlines from these Hollywood studios. But then if you look at movies like Avatar that took 10 years to work on the technology just to develop the VFX that look this amazing, you might think the takeaway from the studios would be, well, if we spend more time working on the VFX, they might actually look good, right? Let me fill you in on a little secret. Movie studios? don't care about good CGI. They just don't. The only thing they care about is pleasing their shareholders on the next earnings call. To them, they've managed to increase the output of superhero movies that are still making billions of dollars, and they've reduced the time it takes to make them. Studios could easily space out their projects to give these super talented and hardworking artists more time to work on the film, but 
that's just not in the best interest of the shareholders. Instead, they increase the pressure on these artists to deliver faster and faster results. No pun intended. When you're putting out this many projects with shorter mm. turnarounds, the VFX mm. will always mm. look worse. So if it looks like a VFX shot in The Flash was made in a week, it's probably because it was. So this is a uh, shout out to Know the Robot on TikTok. Uh, thank you, buddy, for explaining that. We would play the part two, but you know, <laughs> why would I do that? Uh <laughs> True. This is the commentary portion. <laughs> yeah, this is the commentary portion. Come on, man. This is our show. Get your own. Um, so I, I think it's very interesting. Uh, his explanation of how the VFX studios work, which is exactly why I'm not a visual effects editor. Just, you know, uh, that's probably that why. I, yeah, that's probably why I can't get a job, actually. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, him explaining that. Overwork. That's how we like it. <laughs> Unemployment. Um him him saying that also kind of ties in directly with a lot of the animators that have been coming out about beyond the spider-verse um and it also into the spider-verse and across the spider-verse they've been talking about uh there were more than 110 employees who left uh 110 artists approximately uh that left the film during its production so uh, I I see it. I see the time crunch, but you guys are literally making the future, um, which is interesting because there's a strike about this specific thing that's happening. But the only people in the industry that are currently not striking, uh, the directors are are have already like you know signed a deal, so their strike is pretty much over. Um, the post production guilds are not striking. This seems like this seems like a union issue. This seems like this would definitely be a union issue because that's specifically what the union is for. The, these unions are to set in place regulations of uh, how workers are being treated, how they're being compensated, and things like that. That's what these unions are supposed to be for. So the fact that they're not doing their job, these guys are clearly not. I, I just don't. Sometimes I I really feel like I understand a lot of stuff that goes on in Hollywood, right? Like I do a lot of research. I talk to a lot of people. I interact with a lot of people. I gain a lot of knowledge about a lot of this stuff. But then stuff like this will happen that makes me so confused because with more time, you can develop a better product and with a better product, you can make more money. So I just don't understand the reason to have an entire studio and an entire staff of over a hundred people crunch them so much to where they leave. And this is, it's the same thing in the gaming industry. These publishers put all of this pressure on the developers to get things done by this date, this time. We need this showcase. We need this. We need that. And it's like, okay, but that's not realistic. Yeah. Are there some lazy people? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Ones who are, you know, like quote unquote working from home and really just phoning it in. Yeah, sure. That happens all the time. But, you know, maybe don't hire shitty people. I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know what the solution to that is. I'm not the HR manager. But, yeah, every time I feel like I understand a little bit more, I understand a little bit less. And it kind of pisses me off because I, I love the movie industry. I would love to have a job of some kind that involves the movie industry of some kind. I don't know what the fuck it'll be. I don't know what the fuck. It probably doesn't even exist yet because I have to create it, uh, clearly. Um True. You know, I got to be a trendsetter, man. I got to do it myself. You know, I got to hit that Thanos. But mm. I can't really, I just don't understand it sometimes. Having to have an entire staff of people just feel like, oh yeah, we're, we're pretty much done. And then for Amy Pascal, who has been the person to work on all of the previous Spider-Man films, like all of them, except for, you know, the Toby series and the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, she actually said, and I quote, hold on, let me pull this fucking quote up right here. Cause this is from uh, Vulture. Oh shit, it was taken down. Okay. Amy Pascal responded to across the Spider-Verse animators who have been complaining, demoralized over multiple revisions of the final renders of the movie. If the story isn't right, you have to keep going until it is. Welcome to making a movie. Which feels Jesus. so very tone deaf. And I never would have thought Amy Pascal would say some shit like that. Never. Like, especially because she's worked very hard to get into the position that she is. Specifically working with, uh, like, working on the Spider-Man projects. Because it's not like she was just given that. She had to fucking work for that shit. So, I, I don't know. I just, I would have thought there would have been a little bit more grace. 
Um, Dan O'Brien, let's see. Yeah. Incredible to have a high-ranking person like Amy Pascal spouting such utter nonsense into the universe. A cardinal rule of animation is that you fix your story problems early in the pipeline so that it's not cheap. Um, let's see. Not after shots are fully rendered when it's very expensive to do so. Um, here are her exact comments. Amy Pascal, former Sony Pictures Entertainment chairperson and producer on Spider-Verse 1 and 2, defended uh, the management style, saying one of the things about animation that makes it such a wonderful thing is to work on is that you can get to keep going until the story is right. If the story isn't right, you have to keep going until it is. So that's the full quote. Um, let's see. Her response to the workers who felt demoralized by having to revise final renders several times may not go over well with the artist. I guess. It is what it is. Welcome to making a movie, she told the Vulture article. Jesus. Yeah. That is insane. That is an insane comment. I... Yeah, they raised concern about the un unsustainable work environment and it pushed 110 crew members to bail mid-production, which actually delayed the movie. And it's already set for Beyond the Spider-Verse to be delayed from its original March 2024 release date. Already. And they're, they're like, I think they're past scripting stage, so they're still in pre-production and they've already delayed it. So Yeah, I mean... That's what happens when you have to fucking make two movies in the span of a, a short time and the animators are already like the VFX artists are fucking drained yeah. mentally. Hold on. I'm trying to find the I found the rest. I found the actual original article. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Let's see. Um, let's see. While frequent major overhauls are standard operating procedures in animation, Pixar films can be can take in between four to seven years to plot, animate, and render. Those changes typically occur only during development and storyboarding stages. But in the case of Spider-Verse 2, as well as Spider-Verse 1, crew members say that they were asked to make alterations to already approved and finalized animation sequences that created a backlog of work across multiple late stage departments. Across the Spider-Verse, was meant to debut in theaters in April of 2022 before it was postponed to October of that year and then to June of this year. Um, uh, reported as a pandemic related delays. However, the four crew members say animators who were hired in the spring of 2021 sat idle for anywhere from three to six months that year while Lord tinkered with the movie in the layout stage and still coming up with story bits when the first 3D representation of the storyboards were originally created. As a result, these individuals say they were pushed to work more than 11 hour days, seven days a week for more than a year to make up for the lost time and sudden changes and were forced to back to the drawing boards as many as five to six times to revise their work during the final rendering stage. That's insane. And, yeah. you know, for anybody who's never worked on a YouTube video, and that's just a YouTube video, by the way, who has never rendered a video before, just a video, not an animation, not a 3D rendering, not a composite, not a rotoscope, nothing. Literally just a video that you cut and cut together and you, you realize like how long it takes for that video to render and put out. Imagine having to do that with an entire 4K quality movie where you had to go Jesus. in and change frame by frame shit. And then not only that, the changes that you do at one point in the story have to reflect that same character later on in the story. So you have to remember to go back and do that. So if you've already finished uh, the first quarter of the movie, because they when they make movies, they don't do it chronologically. Sometimes they'll start at the end. Sometimes they'll go to the beginning. Sometimes they'll go to the middle. You know, they'll like jumble around, jumble around based um, on what works better for production timelines. So they may have already finished like the end sequence with Miguel and the fight and all this other stuff towards the end. But then uh, just like in the trailer, Miguel doesn't look as stocky in the original trailer. I don't know if you noticed that uh, they change his yeah. animation style to give him that, as they call Dorito back. But that wasn't changed until after that version of the movie was already finished. So there is a version of the movie that exists with smaller Miguel. 
Yeah. That which is seems insane. Which seems so crazy, bro. It seems so crazy. I I just don't understand. This this is the type of stuff that really infuriates me. Um and I just I, I just wish things weren't this way. Because we would have so yeah. much better shit if we just paid people better ra- wages. They would want to make more things. They would want to make better things. They would want to stay at work longer because they actually enjoy their jobs. Like 110 people would not want to fucking quit working on a Spider-Man movie. Are you kidding me? Arguably the greatest Spider-Man movie there there has been in a, it, forever. Let's be real. Like I, I've only seen bits and pieces of the movie, allegedly. Um, but oh, hey, look, man, I'm not a I'm not about to lie to my people. Man, I can't afford to go to see this movie. I can't afford to do anything. What the fuck? How dare they have this? Mo- I'm just waiting for this bitch to hit Disney Plus or hit the internet. One of them. Um, mm. So <laughs> that's how I watch my fucking movies. That's how I play my video games too, allegedly. Um, and I don't finish them. But yeah, I I think in an industry with multi billion dollar revenue sources there should be more people that are actually happy to be in this industry. There should be more people that are creating great and amazing stories and amazing things, but they're just not because they're driven by the greed of those all the way at the top who are already making all the money, which is why we have a WGA, DGA, and PGA strike now. So I just, yep. I just don't fucking get it. That's my little rant for today. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Hey man, I, if I you always because this is <laughs> this is a lot. It's it's funny because it it reminds this like industry. Obviously, it's similar to like anime and you know these studios over in Japan, right? Mm-hmm. Because they are overworked and underpaid, and they and people expect like an insane product. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For some of these, and it's just like holy shit! Like this shit seems almost impossible to get a decent product out of these people who are fucking dying essentially not dying but you know what i mean they're obviously overworked fingers bleed they obviously have to work crunch time hours yeah like it's just like jesus christ yeah it's it gets to be a little bit much i i can't even imagine what these situations are really like man imagine if they still had those hot ass small ass editing rooms like like they used to have back in the early 2000s jesus man. that'd be terrible no air conditioning you know back in the day man they didn't used to respect editors the way that they do now which i, yeah. I honestly i haven't worked on a major production in almost 10 years so i don't even know i don't even know when i started i worked on the amazing spider-man 2 i worked on a title sequence and I worked on the sequence with him and the lizard in the first movie mm. where uh, he's like, he shoots the webbing and the hands come out when he's trying to save Gwen Stacy. Yeah, my boss was responsible for that. And that mm. was that was a sequence that was changed so many times. That was the only time I've ever worked on a major movie, right? Everything else has been yeah. like, you know, on a significantly smaller scale or assisting on a on a major movie somewhere um but you know that nda is still in place so you know we can't <laughs> can't talk about it type shit um yeah yeah yeah, yeah you, Allegedly. Know, you know upper upper echelon type shit you know you niggas wouldn't know but <laughs> anyway mm. um yeah those those specific scenarios are they just feel like they don't exist anymore and i don't know man i i feel like a lot of industries would really change if we actually just gave a shit about humans honestly <laughs> so yeah, it's it's interesting because these are our favorite mediums, right? Like gaming, yeah, movies, yeah. animation. And it's just like, holy fuck, how are we going to get new people involved and invested when our fucking work conditions are fucking terrible yeah. for these certain industries? Does Mr. Beast have to own everything? He might have to. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, but he got to own towns. He got to own movie studios. Like, just bring back ethics. Wow, I never thought I would say that. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. You're not getting that shit. Yeah. So we got deadlines over here. <laughs> we need this bitch out by Christmas. Hey, get it done. <laughs> we might revise it a few times, but hey. Hey, yeah. You gonna be all right? You're not gonna see your family for a minute, but don't worry, uh, they gonna be gonna straight. Die. You <laughs> might be close, but you're not gonna die. Yeah. So. We we'll make sure of it. Mm-hmm. 
We're going to get you a catheter and an IV. You're going to be sitting there animating. <laughs> oh, nah. Nah, nah not a sick. catheter and an IV. That's sick, bro. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different... <laughs> Yo, if I ever walked into a workplace and saw that, I would just I would just be horrified. I wouldn't even That's know... That's really the type of timing they're on, too. It's yeah. the worst part. But they catheter in, young man. <laughs> You want to do it yourself, or we got we got a nice burly nurse to come and help you. We're gonna attach it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do it yourself, or we doing it for you? That's insane. Uh, Fleece Johnson, we can do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. <laughs> the choice is yours. Oh man, hey, but that's that's pretty much it, man. Uh, we actually yeah. got through quite a bit of. You know, there was obviously a ton of other stuff that we could have talked about today, but I'm glad we got a chance to highlight a bunch of the stuff. Uh, Plank, any any takeaways, anything that you did want to want to discuss today on the show? Um, no, nah, man, it's a, it's really interesting to see the inside to our favorite mediums, right? Obviously, you got the stuff going down with the FTC and the mob ties shit. You got the movie industry uh, giving us our favorite overworked animators <laughs> so it's been a real interesting set of months one thing i will add i'm glad these people do not edit these movies in a skyscraper let's just say that Dang. in tall buildings <laughs> true i'm very happy about that maybe you know two maybe three story buildings at the most but that's about it so <laughs> mm. Well, with that being said, we want to thank you guys for listening and watching this week's episode. Make sure to give it a like, rate us five stars, all that good shit. Um, of course, the podcast is available on every single podcast platform, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, all that good shit. Um, but if you guys have any thoughts, comments, questions, anything that you thought was interesting about this week's episode, make sure to let us know in the comments. Shoot us some, uh, shoot us some comments on our social media. That's going to be in the description. But thank you guys for listening and watching. We will catch you guys next week. Make sure to keep it canon.